Good morning. My name is Rebel and I am the Rebel Reseller and today I'm going to do the second half of my what solds for last weekend which was October 1st to October 3rd. This is technically uh, take three. The first time I caught my mistake pretty early and started all over and then I made a I forgot to screen capture and did the entire video last night. Um, and there was no screen capture to share the things that I had sold. It was just me talking. I am inept, technically. But, um, like I mentioned in my previous video, um, I had a really good week. And then my weekend was pretty sad. And then it's just gotten worse. You know, it's, it's part of you know, the ebb and flow of reselling. But, you know, I've worked really hard this year to get ready for fourth quarter and day 10, and it's still not what I was expecting. So it's a little, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, discouraging. But, and I say this, you know, I've had other people send me comments about just how slow things are, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep listing. Keep doing sales. If you don't do sales, do them. I started my first ever 15% off sale this morning that I'm going to run through Thursday. See what that does. I might even do a 20% sale next weekend just to kind of hopefully get stuff moving. Another big thing I did this week um, was I had done Mercari for a while. And then just kind of wasn't really keeping up with it as well as I should. So I just deleted all of my listings. And then this week I have started cross-listing to Mercari again. Um, I do use um, a cross-listing app called List Perfectly. It's probably the second or third one that I've used. I really like it. It was the first one that I used that would actually transfer your pictures over seamlessly. I had one where it threw all of my pictures into a folder backwards. So not only could I not just go click, you know, and get everything loaded, I had to do them one at a time. Maybe they've gotten better. I'm not going to name names. But um, I have started cross-listing a whole lot more to Facebook and Mercari just to kind of, you know, see if I can get this momentum going for third quarter, I mean fourth quarter. So let me go ahead and get started. If you're new to my channel, I have been reselling on eBay specifically for 22 years. I buy stuff at thrift stores and yard sales and um, estate sales, um, sometimes right off of Facebook. And, and this past year I did a hybrid auction, which was amazing. And then I resell it on primarily eBay. But like I said, I did start earlier this year with other platforms. So another thing to point out is when I say something sold for $8, like this first item, uh, I do charge shipping. I don't do free shipping. So, you know, that is what I sold the item for plus the buyer paid shipping. I'm scatterbrained, but all right, let me start through this list. Also at the end of this, because it's, it's kind of short because my cells, like I said, were not what I would hoped for, but, um, I am, I had a few people ask about the spreadsheet that I use. So I'm going to talk about it at the end of this video, kind of pull two things together. All right. So this first item that I sold is Pete the Cat. Now this was a viewer, yay Misty, thank you, um, who purchased this and she also purchased a pair of pants that I, I shipped together. Um, but, you know, I really appreciate it. And then Misty came back later in, I think in the same week and bought several more things. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But um, I, I picked him up somewhere. I'm pretty sure he was a dollar or less like I've said in many of my other videos, most of the toys that I buy probably average out a dollar or less. 
Um, and then we have started selling clothing also this year, just kind of to hedge, you know, times when things aren't selling as well as I hoped. And we're doing quite well with clothing right now. You know, we've gotten to the point where pretty much daily I'm selling something. I think one day last week I actually sold four things that were clothing. So, all right, which is this next item was one of the things I sold last weekend. This was a CJ Banks women's button jacket. Um, and I did end up selling it. I've got a cheat sheet right here. Um, for best offer of $20. And with our clothing, we've pretty much, we kind of dabbled a little bit in like Goodwill, but their prices are kind of crazy. And we were finding amazing deals at yard sales for like $2 or less on most things, jeans, jackets. Um, you know, we were paying like $5 or less for them. And I have really been focusing, you can see my piles over there. I've been really focusing on getting measurements of clothing and then my husband and son are going to try to tag team taking pictures so we can get a bunch of clothes listed in the next, you know, month or so. I have tons, tons. But, all right, back to this. All right, this is a Gigo Toys. It was an Indian doll. I think I picked this up at the Goodwill bin, so it would have been paid by the pound. Um, and I did end up selling her for best offer of $10. She did have her little tag right there. This is a costume that I picked up at a yard sale a couple of weeks ago. I paid $2 for it. It has a little stuffed baby Joey that sat in a pouch in front, size 24 months, and I ended up selling it for the $17.95. These are wrap tiles. Um, they're the little wrist straps. There's, I forget, oh, the live pets. You know, there's cute little fuzzy things, but I guess this was more pointed towards the boys. Um, I picked these up, I want to say at a consignment sale for a couple of bucks. I can't remember. It's all becoming mush because I have, it's been an amazing year of sourcing, but my memory's just not keeping up. But I ended up selling the wrap tiles for $17.95. This is Cole's Cares. I love to pick them up. Usually I get them for like 50 cents or less. If they're clean, it's just an easy thing. And I ended up selling him for $8.96. Like I said, not everything is a big sell for me, but my $8.99 or less is what pays the bills. Pays the bills. This is a Fisher-Price dollhouse um, barbecue grill that went with the Loving Family series. I did pick up a dollhouse and lots of accessories and figures earlier in the summer. I paid $25 for all of it, and then I have parted out some of the, the sets. And this ended up selling for the $13.45. These are American Greetings coffee cups. I think I, well, it was on a half price table. I do remember this part, and I was supposed to pay only 50 cents, but she charged me a dollar each which is fine. I, I like to pick up these plush. They're really cute. And they have these little skates that they always were on. I don't remember this cartoon from the 80s. I grew up overseas. So we only were able to watch, you know, what was on the AFRTS system that was available to the Americans on the bases. I don't remember this series, but I ended up selling these cups for $17.95. This is from my online auction that I keep putting post uh, videos out on. This is the Little Caesars Pizza Man. He was still in his bag, but the bag had some issues. But I ended up selling him for the $10.95. This is a Little Unicorn Buffalo Bison Lovey. Such an odd thing to have on a lovey. But nevertheless, I picked it up. I want to say it was at a consignment sale in a baggie for a dollar. That's what I'm remembering. And I ended up selling the lovey for $17.95. This is Aurora Destination Nation. Now, not all of those plush sell for decent amount. A lot of them uh, are just kind of generic type animals. And I've said this many a times before, if they've got wild colors or they're just an different animal, not just your normal dogs and bears and rabbits and stuff. They tend to do quite well for me. And this was a Fennec Fox and I ended up selling him for $17.95. 
these are Fisher Price stacking cups. Um, I want to say I did get all of these together in a bag, probably paid a couple of dollars for it. Um, but I always pick these up when I see them and then I just kind of hold them over in my unlisted area until I have enough to make a lot. And I ended up selling these cups for best offer of $20. They're just little, some of these are two piece and some of these are singles and they just stack. And then they had some of these little rattle cups that would go on top. This is a Unipack Donkey Plush. It was just very cute. I tend to see the ones that are just little. They're like six inch plush, but this was a much larger one. It was 13 inches, had the little ribbed stuff. I just thought it was cute and different. And I ended up selling it for best offer of $14. This is a Fisher Price Little People Christmas Train. I think I bought a box that had lots of little people in it. I think there was Noah's Ark in there and then this Christmas stuff. Um, so I separated everything out and this was incomplete. I think it's supposed to have a, an elf and a reindeer and stuff like that. But I ended up selling this for best offer of $12. This was my son's. I'm going to have to give him the money for it. Um, after I make sure there's not going to be any issues because you know how that can be. I got two returns right now. It's kind of annoying for changed mind. But anyway, um, this was his, and I ended up selling it for the $22.45, so I'll be giving him that money. This is a cool toy. If you see these, pick them up. Even unworking, they sell for probably over $20. I think people buy them to get the parts to fix other ones. Mine was working, but it was temperamental. Um, it just seemed like it didn't always want to play along. So I did put that in my listing and I ended up selling it for a best offer of $30. Very cool game. This is a baby blanket. I pick these up whenever they're relatively cheap, you know, $3 or less at yard sales and consignment sales. This one um, did have a few spots on it and I just say that because I didn't want to run the risk of washing it um, and it like start unraveling. I just leave it to the buyer to clean. And I ended up selling it for best offer of $15. This is, this goes to the Fisher Price Great Adventures. Now that was the series that came out before Imaginext. And they had Western towns and pirates and ships and they do really well. And I always pick them up and save them and do lots. This was the eye patch on like a skull island. It kind of looked like a gel cell looking thing. Um, I actually found this like this. I didn't remove it from one, which I have done when they're damaged. Um, they had a couple of parts that you could take off and sell, but I ended up selling this for $8.96. But if you don't know about the Fisher Price Great Adventures, go ahead and um, do a search on here and familiarize yourself with them because they do quite well. This, my husband shows up at checkout some of the times from estate sales and stuff with some of the weirdest stuff. This was a whirl -a sizer string exerciser. I'm just shaking my head. I'll show you a picture. I'm pretty sure he paid like a dollar for it. And you just kind of, you know did this. I think in a haul video, I might have actually pulled it out. I'm not quite sure, but I ended up selling it for the $26.95. These are some clogs by Spring Step Lartist. Um, I went to a yard sale. This lady had a tarp laid out in her driveway with tons of these really nice um, shoes. They, there was a lot of um, the dance goes and just other shoes that were just, I to me, are higher end. I paid $4 a pair. I think I only have a few pairs left mm -hmm. and I ended up selling these clogs for $30. This is Cabbage Patch Kids um, from 2019. It's just the little nine inch, nine and a half inch dolls they were all dressed like as animals or zoo animals and stuff like that. Um, I picked them up. Sometimes I do small lots with them. 
but I ended up selling just this one for the $8.95. This is a Commonwealth Bear stocking. I pick up stockings all year long. And of course, this time of the year, they're going to start selling. But I do sell them all year long. Um, I did end up selling this for the $22.45. These are some Air Jordan sneakers my husband picked up somewhere. I'm pretty sure he paid, I want to say either $3 or $5 for them. And... I didn't clean them. They were made out of some kind of suede looking thing. So I just listed in there that I'm leaving all cleaning to the buyer. It wasn't overly bad, but it didn't need a cleaning. And I ended up selling them for the $26.95. This I got from, ooh, let me bring that down, from the online auction that I bought from. I had to do some digging on this. I knew it was Salem Avalanche because it's written on their hat and of course, I figured out that it was a baseball team, even without my husband's help. Um, but this wasn't their mascot when I went looking. And come to find out, this was the original mascot. It was called the Baseball Nut. And fans hated it and mocked it. And they ended up changing it to whatever it is now. But I guess he's supposed to be shaped like an almond. And since I couldn't find anything on him, I did do an auction for $49.99, and I only got the single bid, which I'm still thrilled with. So, you know, sometimes, I don't know, they picked a really odd, I, it, it's funny because, you know, baseball nut, but... And then, I, I say this pretty much um, almost on all of my solds these days, sloths sale. Not for big, but I didn't have this listed very long. This is by Midwood Brands. I think you can pick these up at most retail stores. Um, and I did end up selling it for the $8.96. Just very cute. All right, here's my big sale. We went on a 23-mile yard sale a couple of weeks ago. I'm thinking we have released the video on it. And, or we've talked about it. Um, these were Danner boots. We pulled into this area... And it was, it almost looked like a campground and there were just little vendors all around in a circle in this highly shaded area. All I saw initially was a bunch of tools and stuff I wasn't interested in, but my husband told me get out and I ended up, did find one thing to resell purse. I mean, that I found, but then he walked up to me with these boots and these are Danners and he paid $5 for them. And they're in, they were in mint condition. Let me show you the soles. They hadn't been used at all. And a lot of them, the brand new in the box type, were selling for about $300. So, you know, I started it out kind of high, $250. But I ended up taking a best offer of $180. So my pitiful week of sales at least had this highlight. Let me go get my lights. Okay. I've picked one Facebook sale. I didn't have a whole lot last week of the, on there either. They just, they've changed something and it's just, it's, the stuff's not moving like it was a year ago. But this was a Coles Cares Polar Bear and the book that went with it. This has been listed for a very long time. So I was just very happy to see it go. I did sell it for $7. All right. So this next, I've had a couple of people I ask about my spreadsheet. I'm just going to press preface this with, you know, it works for me and the way I like to do things. You know, when I first started listing on eBay, I, I had a spiral notebook and I did everything by hand. I wrote down my titles. I wrote down my descriptions and, you know, the price that I was going to sell it for. And it worked for me. And then when I met my husband, he got me more into doing a spreadsheet. I just, I like to have the physical listing written down. I do keep a um, thing of my, the record of the item number once it's listed. And maybe this falls back on my military background. You know, everything was paperwork, paperwork, paperwork when I was in the military. I did inventory management in the military for 13 years millions of dollars, you know, we were accountable for every single nut, bolt, screw. So I'm just used to having paperwork. There's probably easier ways to do this, 
but this is my way. And so what I do is when I'm listing stuff, um, I take my pictures. I have everything like set up that I'm going to work on. I take the pictures of everything and then I have a computer right by me and I start with my item description. Let me pull this back up. Yep. All right. I start with my item description. I type down what it is. My, I have a set way I like to do my manufacturer, what it is, color, size, anything like that. If it's stuffed animals, I always end mine with stuffed animal toy. Plush is usually somewhere up in the front. Um, then I would type my conditions. Um, I have hotkeys that my husband set up for me where all I have to do is hit a button and it says light playware from play handling, some playware from play handling, and then if I need to note anything else about it or if I'm going to put the, the barcode number or any of that stuff or goes in my condition and then I weigh it. And the weight that I put on my spreadsheet is what I estimate it to be once it's packed. And just with time, I've learned, you know, whether it's going to be in a box or poly bag or bubble miller or whatever, I put it in ranges. If you see on here, you're going to see four ounces. That's for things that are going to be under four, eight ounces, 12 ounces, 15 ounces. And then I do the, the pounds, one to two, two to three, three to four. And then I bag it and I set it aside and I do everything all at once. So I may spend four hours just processing stuff. Typically, I will say I'll do it anywhere, depending on how tedious it is or if it's closed or whatever, probably 25 and I've done up to like 70 some listings at one time. Um, and again, it's just this part. Um, later on in the day, I'll make a printout of everything I've worked on that day. I take it to my building, I put it away, and I write down the bin locations. And then I come back, do family things in the evening, and then at some point I sit down and I do my research. And basically all I do is copy my title, paste it, and then see what's out there. And I just, I make very quick decisions based on what I'm seeing. Sometimes I have to take away a few words um, to try to get a better understanding of what I think. And then I just go from there. I type the price down. Um, and then usually in the mornings, I go ahead and I add my location. These are my locations. And I talked about how I do my custom SKUs in my first video that I ever did on how I store 7,000 items, which now is over 8,000. Um, but, you know, I have a shelving number system and then a shelf number system and then a basket number system. So, you know, and then every morning I'm an early bird. I get up anywhere between 5.30 and 6.30, make me a pot of coffee, and then I sip usually for about two hours and list. Or if I, I didn't do that many um, then I'll do uh, account maintenance. You know, I might end my oldest 25 or I may do some cross-listing, just whatever. But for those two hours, usually about two hours, I list and then I get ready for going to pull and pack about 8.30 or so. So that's just how I work it. Could I do use the phone or use my computer and make drafts? Yes, but I like having this on paper I like having a record of my item numbers. I like that I have a bin location here because sometimes when I go to type it, I might mess up the numbers and I can always come back to here and find out the exact location that it should have been in. Um, and it, you know what, at the end of the day, it's just my way of doing things. And like right now, I can tell you exactly how many listings I've done this year. I'm gonna pull it all the way down here so, so far this year, I've done 5,950 new listings, um, and it's just how I do it. Now, I do have another screen here of the clothing, how we are doing clothing. This is just my toys and everything else. And then the clothing, my husband is a nerd. He was an IT manager, so he knows how to code. So, he did this um, spreadsheet for me. 
and it's got all kinds of magic in it that I like because I just I like I like this this is my thing but same thing um, he's got coating in here so if I'm doing um, pants or shirts it in the end spits out different information for them I just type in like I normally do the brand what it is women's and then at, for me at the end I do color and what the fabric is and then I have my condition notes just like with everything else you know anything most things that we sell we do state that it's either got light wear or it has some wear like with fading and stuff from being washed I put in these uh, over here the measurements you know if it's a shirt I'm doing chest measurements if it's pants I'm doing waist measurements and then this is the magical of it all then I can go over here and he has it all set up so it's the same thing I can click on the title just copy it and I put it in my spread I mean in my listing um, but here in the description when I copy that block it gives me my description it gives me all of my measurements my sizes all in one blanket bullet and I can just paste it into my um, listing love it love it love it so like I said we've only been doing clothing since this summer so I think at this point I've got like 400 433 listings not all of it's listed yet because some of it's sitting here waiting for pictures but it's just how I like to do things some people might think it's a, w a lot more work I just like doing it this way and one other note on the way I list I don't start from a brand new page for every item that I list I have my spreadsheet and then on the left side of the tab I have a, one of my listing that's um, first class there and I'm going to do a cell similar from that one that way all of my shipping and some of my details and stuff they're all there I don't have to worry about it I don't like thinking that I would um, list something from somebody else's listing and then you spend probably just as much time as it is for me to list something making sure that all of their specs are the same I just I, I, I can't I can't even fathom doing that some people may find especially with clothes maybe it's a good thing I know of other resellers that do it's just not my thing I want to make sure that the information I put in is my information and my information only so if there's an issue then it's my own fault and then on the right side I do all of my calculated shipping stuff and that way you know all I'm basically doing is changing categories um, it has all of my normal spills in my listing and all I'm doing is copying and pasting and I just sit basically I sit I list something while I'm waiting for it to process I take a sip of coffee put my cup back down I move on to the next one and then I just do that for two hours it's just how I do things uh, you know I'm not gonna be apologetic about it but you know if it might help somebody who you know needs to be like me see it it's got to be concrete um, and every time I see people who, you know, uh, make a post because, you know, funny things are happening with their listings that they weren't, you know, they've gone from free shipping to paid shipping or vi usually it's the other way, you know, they thought they were doing paid shipping. You know, sometimes I wonder if that's just the translation, you know, they've done a self similar and weren't paying attention and, you know, I've never had an issue like that knock on wood but all right I think my video is getting very long so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go if you have any questions about anything please do send me comments as usual if you haven't subscribed please subscribe click the bell and you'll let it Facebook will let you know when my husband has released a new video um, definitely thumbs up me 